few months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. These stories are fascinating. So who's next? Uh, next we have Julius Gias. He was born in 1911. Julius Gias was a pioneering newspaper editor and he managed the Ventura Star Free Press for 36 years. It's amazing. He took the uh, Ventura Star newspaper, it was a weekly publication out of Thousand Oaks, and he turned it into a daily edition. At the time of his retirement in 1987, the circulation was 25,000 subscribers. It's just amazing. Uh, in 1935, uh, Julius realized that in order for man to be successful, one must one first must discover the direction in which he wants to go. And I think that's really profound because what that means is that once you find something you want to do, it's not really work. It's kind of like fun. And that, that's what he did. So uh, his personal assignment was to establish a newspaper from scratch in an area that has a, a, a competition uh, with another newspaper. And he did that. And he was walking down the street one day after he started his newspaper and the competition across the street you know, it would make funny noises and faces at him. But the competition had reason to be wary of Julius because he bought them out 10 years later. He overcame them and bought them out. Um, it was really, so by 1960, Julius had achieved a lot of the accomplishments that he wanted to do. So he took a job at the Ventura Star Free Press and moved to Ventura. And like I said before, he, he took this small, weekly edition and turned it into a daily newspaper with over 25,000 subscribers. Um, he was an admirable gentleman. Um, he was Democrat for the most part, but it seems like all his friends are Republicans. He was another one of these people who could get along with everybody. He was just amazing. Julius Gias. Good evening. It's a real privilege tonight to have the guest that we have with us, Julius Gaius. So stay with us. We'll be right back and talk about everything in the world. Now, a little, a little bit about the U.S. economy. That's in the front page of every newspaper in the country, I guess. What do you think? Do you think we're in dire straits? There's an article out today or a story out today that our, everything seems to be pretty good. Well, I, th I, I don't think we're in dire straits. I think we're, we're in, uh, in uh, declining times. Uh, and that stock market sure isn't doing anything to make anybody uh, cheer. Yeah. But I think we've, we're, we're still on a, uh, on a pretty substantial economic ground. And... Uh, I hope the uh, the Congress now being having gotten the Congress out of Washington <laughs> and uh, and some <laughs> semblance of uh, settlement in that in that terrible terrible budget dispute. I hope that uh, that uh, business can take find something to have a little faith in in there. 
the, the thing that really troubles me great, the most greatly is the situation, of course, in the Persian Gulf and uh, the saber rattling. <coughs> and uh, I, I, I can't excuse what I think is saber rattling on the part of our administration as well as on the part of, of Sudan. I, I, it seems to me that they're sparring around like a couple of, uh, of grade school kids out on the playground. That, uh, you know, if you don't knock it off, I'm gonna, gonna get you, or back and forth. It, yeah. I wish that they would, would face up to the realities that, that, that a conflict, that an armed conflict between the powers of, between those two powers would be devastating, absolutely devastating to the world. Our UN is supposed to be almost fully behind us. I yes. guess there are a few that aren't, but uh, they're I, in there. I, I'm concerned about what would be the reaction. The Arab states are now apparently with us, all except for uh, Iraq. I'm concerned what the Arab, what position the Arab states would would take if it came to a shooting war. Yeah. Uh, whether or not the, the blood of the Arabs would uh, be thicker than their, uh, than their uh, present relationships in the UN. Okay, let's get that's off. A, that's a that's sad a, subject. That's a grin, grim subject. Let's Indeed. Talk. You know, one of the big things we're, we've been hearing during this election campaign is we should throw the rascals out. And I think there was a comedian that had a great line about consumers report. If only we could investigate all of our politicians as we do cars, refrigerator, and stoves, we'd have no trouble in electing superior Good men. people. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I, uh, you know, there are two, two uh, uh, measures on the, on the November uh, ballot uh, to um, throw the, the, the rascals out yeah. after a, a by limiting terms. I'm not, per I'm personally not in favor of either one of those, uh, simply because I, uh, I have a higher respect, I think, than most people do uh, for politicians. And I cringe when uh, the elect people in the electronic media so frequently speak of the word politician as if it is almost a four-letter word. He's yeah. a poli... They don't... They, we've got to realize, you know, Bill, that this country is... is, is uh, couldn't function without politicians. And all politicians are not bad. I've, I've been on the fringes of, uh, of government as an observer, as we have... as I have said, for... for more than half a century, and I have found very few politicians or people in public office who are not uh, uh, faithful, honest, and trying to do their best. Uh, we ought not disdain them. We ought not uh, talk about politicians uh, with a, with a, with a, a, a demeaning uh, tone. Uh, we ought to uh, attribute to them the same degree of respect that we give to anyone who is in a, in a difficult service enterprise. And we ought, to, uh, we ought to acknowledge and give them the same right to make a mistake I'm talking about a mistake of judgment, not a mistake of, uh, of taking money under yeah. the table or things like that, but a, make, a, 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 a mistake of judgment in, in, in dealing with uh, legislative affairs. The same right ought to be accorded to them that we would accord to uh, a, uh, a, a businessman or a teacher or an oil man or anyone yeah. else. But I, I honor people in government. and, and the, the thing that concerns me about those two ballot initiatives that would limit terms of office is that we may very well 
by throwing out the good with the bad, we may undermine the leadership of our legislative bodies. Uh, a man, one of the one of the initiatives proposes that terms be limited to two. The first term of a man in the legisl in in the assembly is really a learning experience. Oh, yeah. And the second term, he would be a lame duck yeah. on his way out, and his uh, his influence, his uh, and his probably his uh, dealing with his constituents would be, uh, you know, why should I break my That's right. uh, uh, my butt to uh, yeah to to serve when I'm I'm going to have to leave in two yeah. years? Yeah. So that's uh, I. I think we ought to, ought to think, I'd like to see the, 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 the electorate accord a little more respect to the people who are politicians. Okay. They are not, they're not uh, 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 villains. Not as bad as they're painted, are they? No, they're not villains, and it's a very difficult job, very difficult. A lot of compromise in that. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Uh, have any feelings on education well, in general? I mean, this is another thing after the election, we'll probably have on the front page stories regarding our education in our own town or our own state or even in the country. Uh, Have any feelings? Well, on there are, there are, I think, three measures on the November ballot uh, that, that deal with uh, education funding, and I Personally, I'm going to vote for all of them. All of, uh, I, uh, I've been an advocate of education, a strong advocate of education, all of my years as an editor. And I have a favorite story that, uh, that I think helps to illustrate the impact of the school teacher. When I was in high school, I had a teacher whose name was Lillian Van Devanter. Uh, if you want to look back in your history, there was a Justice Van Devanter on the state, on the U.S. Supreme Court, okay. and she was his niece. And she was a wonderful teacher. I, I, I say that because uh, one day she called me out of a journalism class, which I was taking, and she said, uh, Julius, she said, they, they want a, a correspondent, a school correspondent down at the newspaper in Tacoma, one of the newspapers, and she said they'll, uh, they'll pay you 10 cents an inch for everything you have printed, uh, and uh, I wondered if you'd like to have the job, have, like go down and interview, and things were pretty tough. That was in 1928. Uh, and things were beginning yeah. to get a little tough. And of course I was interested, and I went down to interview. And from that day to this, I've been, that day for until I retired, I had a newspaper job. She launched my career by teaching me the fundamentals of journalism and then sending me off to, to a, a job opportunity. And I say there are, there Throughout our country, in our county, in our city, there are hundreds of teachers like that who have great impact on their students, and uh, I honor them. I, 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 have, I have great respect for those, for all who are in education. You can't uh, solve the problems, all of the problems of literacy and of gangs and of, and of, uh, uh, of, of failures uh, in, in, in the human spirit through it, by throwing money at it. But I still say that we can afford to spend more than we are spending on education. We have about a minute. Would you talk on the most thrilling story that you ever covered? Oh, I. You mentioned this trip that you took. Well, I think China. that was a uh, that wasn't the most thrilling 
uh, story that I covered, but it was certainly the most thrilling of my my uh, experiences in journalism was uh, in uh, 1975 when uh, I was able to accompany, uh, as a member of the press party, mm -hmm. I was able to accompany President Ford on his trip to China. Well, China was, in 1975, was considerably different than it oh, was. Yes. I went back yeah. 10 years later and it had changed greatly, and it has changed even more today. But in 75, uh, China was a very, uh, a very unusually interesting yeah. place to visit. I thank you very much, Julius. Well, I'm it's delighted. It's been a great evening. Thank you very much, Bill. Thanks okay. for asking me. We've been visiting with Julius Geis. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Good night.